Radio Show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We stand together and accept that we now live in a world transformed by Fukushima. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on UCY.TV Radio. We relentlessly engage every ear that listens. We expose and confront the complete lack of accountability for the nuclear industry. Consider social engineering programs to view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. The Age of Vision Radio Show creates a venue that all will choose. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action and save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Our actions matter. Every voice matters. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Thank you for joining me. Today is July 27th. It's a Wednesday, and I interview people on Wednesday. Today we have scheduled uh, Mimi German with No Nukes Northwest. She also runs Radcast.org. Unfortunately, she's not here right now because she had an emergency at work that came up, and she won't be able to join us till 8.30. So... Kind of fortuitous for me, based on the fact that most of you know I'm really a self-avowed flaming liberal, and uh, the uh, showdown that happened yesterday was really quite incredulous, wasn't it? Bernie Sanders actually, exactly as many predicted, <laughs> caved, rolled in, sat in the face of booze, and horrible sounds and people walking out endorsed Hillary, Monsanto, Stalin, Clinton. And I added Stalin since the death of Seth Rich. Now, I, I have a half an hour to talk, so I'm just going to tell you who Seth Rich is, and you can ver- look it up on the Internet. It is a real story. Uh, two days before Bernie so-called endorsed Clinton, a young man who was hired by the DNC to investigate allegations of election fraud, was on the phone to his girlfriend on a Sunday night. He was about to give the report on Monday, a week before the convention, and somebody broke into his D.C. apartment while he was on the phone with his girlfriend, 4 a.m. in the morning. He got into a fight with a guy. The girlfriend heard him. The guy shot him in the back four times. Four. Not once, not twice, but four. Made sure he was really dead. Did not steal a thing. And the Capitol Police say they think it was a thwarted robbery. Really? Well, if you shot somebody in the back four times, wouldn't you take all of his stuff? So, uh, you know, I actually called uh, Senator Sheehan. I think her name is Jean Sheehan. I think she's from Michigan. She was at the DNC earlier this week. And uh, she basically was saying that, uh, you know, how great Hillary was. And she was at the convention and she was talking about how she won this fair and square. And I actually called up to the, uh, her office and said, how dare you say that fair and square? It's not fair and square. And you should be ashamed of yourself. I actually contributed to her campaign. It's women like me who contributed to other women around the country, like Claire McCaskill of Missouri, who was doing jack for her people in St. Louis. Yeah, she wrote some legislation, and she's moved on to her committee meetings. It is, a, is it a national emergency for her that the people in St. Louis are living next to a burning fuse wrap site? Nuclear and other chemicals? 
and she's just moving on. Oh, I've got meetings to go to. Oh, yes, I go to that. That's part of my district, and I go visit those people regularly, and I do meet. I know who Don Chapman is. Really? That's the kind of Democratic Party that stood behind the monster last night against the will of the people, who stood behind election fraud against the will of the people. This is, I mean, honestly, and they're fear porning us with Trump, Trump, Trump. Oh, and you know what? I am probably one of the few Democrats who's on a public air voice who can talk about being uh, intimidated, slandered, and part of the horrible machine that we are going to see under the Trump Pence machine. Because Mike Pence slandered me and called the Capitol Police and said that. I threatened to murder his staff. That's what his office did. They called up. You know why? I called him up in 09 and said, I hope that Congressman Pence changes his mind on his vote. Because they just, I saw him in front of a microphone with John Boehner just now, and they were talking about how proud they were they're reeling in fiscal conservancy and they're not going to reinstate the unemployment benefits for all those people who want to take advantage of the system. And I said, you know what? It's $400 a week, pals. How much do we give to the military? Your vote might make somebody freeze to death this winter. I said, I hope he really rethinks it because $400 is like a million bucks to somebody in the street. And you know what happened? They called the Capitol Police and said, I threatened to murder their staff. The outrage. This is Mike Pence, you guys. This is the guy behind Trump. This is for all you Trump people who think, oh, we're going to make America great. That's the kind of slander. You think we have seen the police state? Clinton and Trump are going to be the police state on Balco, folks. Mike Pence thinks we need uh, re-education camps for gay people. Think of all your gay friends. We have socially accepted gayness as a normal part of society, which it is. God created gay people. People are born gay. You think that's an accident? I don't. The Native Americans certainly didn't. They didn't freak out if you wanted to dress like a girl and go out with a woman. Who cares? There was plenty of men who lived among the women in the Native American cultures. Whatever. They weren't demeaned as less than a man. They were considered sort of semi-women. They didn't look at it as an up or down thing because women in their culture were not treated with such disdain. Last night was just an outrage, folks. I, I honestly am glad Mimi German isn't on the phone <laughs> because it gives me a minute to vent. I'm hoping that we can have Dana Durnford on again this Friday. I haven't talked to him this week. He said he's up for every Friday. I, When I have Dana on, I do like to expand the conversation into something else. Uh, something, something, something much bigger. Uh, because for me personally, it's not that the ocean is dying. It's really about the fact that I honestly... It's more than that. It's the chemical pollution. It's the, it's what we watched. It's Sig Heil. Click your heels and say, everybody ignore the crimes that are going on to the ecocide. It's ecocide, folks. It's not just genocide. They're not just killing our children. They are killing our entire gosh darn planet. The whole fucking thing. The whole thing is going under in mass droves. I actually printed this up. Mass Animal Deaths 2016. I am actually going to get started on that workbook that I told you I'm going to do. I'm going to categorize so that at some point very shortly I'll be able to say how many hundreds of fish have died this year? How many millions of poultry? How many masses of dead fish? How many thousands? How many tons? They report it in varied ways because you think they really know there's 40,000? 200,000 plus probably means a million. I mean, we are living in freaking la-la land, and it's not just them doing it to us. It's us doing it to ourselves. We're eating off our own arms. The Democratic Party is not just going to get a Demexit, and we are not just going to get a Trump-Pence campaign, and maybe... 
I mean, honestly, I personally don't think we're going to have Trump as president. The Rothschilds fucking seriously will not allow it, folks. <laughs> so she, the, the Democratic Party primary was a dry run for the general election, as far as I'm concerned, for the Clinton machine. So either way, I, don't, I mean, it would be interesting to watch. <laughs> now, there's a question. How many guns would be in the street this morning if the Republicans had done that to the Republican base? You know why the Democrats do it to the Democratic base? Because they're fucking wussies. Because these guys can't stand up like Bernie Sanders could not stand up and say, you know what? I'm walking out of this motherfucking place. Fuck you, MSNBC. And you're going to have to edit those words. So that's what he should have done. He missed the greatest opportunity in the world. Can you imagine? We could have overturned the EPA. We could have, you know, we could start, how about stopping the military complex? These murderer death kills. They train our young men to be murderers, folks. And then when the kids can't take it, they come out, oh, he's got PTSD. And I apologize to every soldier and every person who's come out of the military or the police force with PTSD. It's not your fault. We have got to stop blaming the victims. It is the system. It's the industrial military complex. It is Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Mike Pence, uh, Barbara Jackson Lee standing by Hillary Clinton's side. I thought I was going to barf. I thought I really appreciated Barbara Jackson Lee from Texas. Honest to God, I have always admired her. But to watch what she did last night, I, uh, so you know what, folks? As they say, this country's going to get what it deserves. And it's coming. The comeuppance, you know, if, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just one of the uh, emotionally swayed masses, you know. I mean, The reason Bernie Sanders could not stand up is because he is engaged in it, is engaged in capitalism. He's engaged in the industrial military complex. He could not stand up or his whole family would probably be murdered. And he knew that. It's a choice. Life or being rich. You want to be dead or you want to be rich? That's their option. All of them so far have opted for rich. Except for Bobby and Bobby and uh, Jack Kennedy, because they were already rich. <laughs> so even when you're rich, some people with ethics just can't ignore it. And, you know, that's probably what the Congress is all about. All these nouveau riches. Oh, this is so great. We get to drive in limousines and we have a driver. And, you know, I get so much done and I go to all these important meetings. And in the meantime, they are endorsing bombing children in the Middle East for no Absolutely zero, none, zero reason other than they need to drop the fucking bomb somewhere. Or they want their oil. They make these weapons, you know, if you build them, they will come. You have to use them, folks. I'm not against guns, but I am against making it our number one product in this country. The industrial military complex is our number one product. That's why Congress doesn't shut down the bases. That's why they don't move to a peace time, because they have no intention of living in peace. <sighs> Mike Pence thinks there should be re-education camps for gay people, and women who've had abortions should go to jail. <sighs> I mean, I'm just... Uh... <laughs> Oh, Mike uh, from, um, <laughs> well, Mike just told me I should rant for the whole hour. He's from Primer Time. I guess he's listening. Hi, Mike. I am really upset. I'm not just upset. I'm a fucking American who believes in American values and ideals. What we have seen at the Republican and the Democratic Committee are like Soviet values. Sig Heil, they're not even Nazi values. They're not religious fervor. That's what the Nazis were. These guys are Soviet-style socialists. We're going to create, we're going to make this whole thing. No, folks. It's about, democracy is about, I heard these people last night, this is how democracy works. The Republicans did the same. At least, you know what? The Republican Party allowed them, allowed them to elect 
Trump. You know what that's all about, folks? We only have one party in the Soviet states of the United States of America. The Soviet United States of America. We're going to have to fit, figure out a different name for the country here. Because we really now have Republicrats. That's all we got, folks. It's Republicrats. Rats being the operative word. I mean, where is their integrity? Where? And then, I honestly, turning on the television, I mean, the Fox News people are giggling over themselves. They are totally hilarious. They're like, whoo, this is salacious. They love it, baby. <laughs> Especially, you want to hear something interesting? I was watching, I think it was Dabu007. I watched a video right before I went to bed. He was out on the streets with the Black Lives Matter. Him and his partner, they did this little video on YouTube for about, I don't know, a long time, hour and a half. And they went through the Black Lives. They listened to the speech. Speeches, although I didn't really like it because I wanted to hear the speeches and I wanted to be the other part because they did a double video where one guy was in the street and one guy was at the speeches and they met up. But when the delegates came out and they saw the protest, like how big it was, it was gigantic. The fucking, excuse my language, the delegates, the Bernie delegates went back in. They cowered like typical Democrats. <laughs> I was like, no shit, Sherlock. I could not believe it. They're like, hey, the Democrat, the delegates went back out. <laughs> they went back in to let the masses of the people. So they came out. I mean, there were so many delegates, they had to leave. But they didn't come out near the protest. They, they went out through different exits because some of them were afraid of all the black people. <laughs> to be honest, it was hilarious. <laughs> And then you have, like, what I assume to be a pro-Trump guy with his camera on. I don't know, Dob. I haven't really followed every one of his videos, to be honest. But I would assume he's a pro-Trump guy, <laughs> he's just from where he's from. But that was just the most – he's in the middle of it and the thick of it. And these guys are actually reporting on the police brutality. That like, And not just the police brutality, the mind fuck, the, the separate – how they did this, folks. Like – and, you know, they caged people in. Like, they they were, you know, Abby Martin, uh, that really cute journalist, she got rough handled, and they swept her up, and they did not, this is what they're doing now. They're not arresting people. There's no arrest. They sweep you up, put you in a holding cell until they don't want you to go back out in the street. Then they say, oh, charges are dropped. That's police harassment. That is actually used to be illegal in the United States. This is what I'm saying. We are being conditioned to accept illegal conditions, and there is nobody standing up for us. And unless, I don't know, I don't have the answers. Because you heard my rants before last night. Like, I kept hoping Bernie would walk out of the stadium. <laughs> like, what? The, my daughter kept saying, Mom, just wait. There's a big surprise coming. No, shh. I mean, we got sucker punch. Those people got sucker punch. They were told on the inside, don't worry. There's going to be a big surprise. All the delegates, we're going to do something. We're going to take control. We're not going to let the Democrats do this to us. And this is, oh, yeah. So, it's just, it's a, it, it, when, when will the people of America, what will it take? But you know what's really sad is the Republicans are slathering, but they think they're going to get a good guy with Trump. If Trump had picked somebody reasonable, maybe. But this is, will tell you, I posted it to my Facebook page, folks, but I follow a YouTube channel that is really great, and this, it's a couple that did this little video about it's all a shakedown it's all bernie has been in it and in fact that i stopped contributing to him for a long time it is uh, let me see who it's from i'm going to open it up and sorry i don't think you'll be able to hear it that's the cool thing about me there it is from truth stream media and honestly they caught bernie's wife on camera going up to him when everybody was booing him boo 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 she whispers to him and normal cameras can't hear it and i guess they had the equipment to mute down the audience and it says he he she's his wife jane says to him it's because they don't think you're on the nominate nation they don't think you're on the ticket they're booing because you they think you're off and as they pointed out, he shakes his head, grimaces, looks at the crowd, and continues to endorse Clinton instead of saying, hold on, folks, I'm still in it. My name's still in it. I 
am on there, but I'm going to concede. No, he fucking circle jerks around his base, his own base, the millions of people. He slathered up all those $35 contributions. It's, this is the feeling you guys are going to get on the Trump side when you see the fucking military police rolling down the goddamn street because of Mike Pence. Mike Pence actually believes people should be in jail if they've had an abortion. He is a fucking Nazi off the Nazi chart, folks. Look what he did to his own state's economy. You know what? I have two friends here who live in Eugene who just immigrated from over there. I said, why'd you guys move here? They're like Mike Pence. Look what he did to our state. We can't live there anymore. It's like, uh uh-uh. It's a police state there. And look what they have done to the Democratic Committee. I mean, if this is the Soviet Union, and uh, I don't know how we fix it, but you know how we fix it? Dem exit is one. And I honestly would suggest that the Republicans don't fucking vote for Trump. He picked Pence. No, he's probably one of the worst people to rebuild the Republican Party. He did it so that he would alienate every single Clinton supporter to make sure Clinton would get elected. That's why he did it. Anybody who pays attention to politics, which more Democrats pay attention to their candidates. We actually really, a lot a lot of the people that are like looking behind Bernie for the first time are getting it paying attention. I mean, I personally am one of those nuts that sit and work while I listen to C-SPAN and I call them up. I have actually a file on my desk called Government Numbers. <laughs> and in there, I actually have a really great page that I printed out from FAIR's media contact list, and FAIR is F-A-I-R. It's an acronym, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. They list all the phone numbers. You can print this out and call these bastards whenever they're, like, you know, given their... This is why I call... This is how I can easily call up MSNBC. I don't look it up. I come to my little file and dial 212-664-4444. Say, I'd like to make a comment about the Rachel Maddow Show, please. They hook me through and I say, yeah, this is a Tokyo Rose alert for Rachel Maddow. The propaganda machine is so... You guys need better writers. I know you're reading a script, but this sucks. I mean, literally, these people on these shows are outrageous. It People out there need to watch V for Vendetta. Seriously. This is why people put that mask on. For those of you who have not watched that movie, that's where that symbol comes from. The movie V for Vendetta. It's a very stirring movie. It, it does cause... I think it doesn't call for violence, to be honest. In the movie... The people came out into the streets and the police joined them. It did not call for violence. It called for unity. What happened in the movie is there were a couple of buildings at the beginning and at the end. Government buildings, and I'm not going to tell you the story, but they're big buildings as symbols. Like they got blown up as symbols just to destroy the institutions. And But it did not call for violence. The violence that we're now seeing is coming from instigated from our own institutions, just like the EPA, just like the NRC. They are instigating violence against our own country, us. They're doing it to us, folks. You know what I found when I talked to that health physicist? He convinced me that the new, the, we were just, we were, we didn't even talk directly. We were text, writing back and forth. Uh, and I think he was texting. I was, I was typing. But he convinced me that the chemical pollution is just as severe. So I said, after I hung up the, uh, stopped talking to him, I went to the EPA website and I said, okay, I, I just typed in Redondo Beach toxic pollution because I'm from Redondo Beach, California. I moved away in 2002 because for the last two years I lived there, every time I walk on the beach, my feet would itch. If I went into the ocean, I would get sick. I'd shake and quell for a few weeks. I didn't have to go to the doctor, but I had a fever. And you know what I found from 1987? Thursday, August 21st, 1997, proposed rules. They did not even tell anybody. They actually discovered 
that Westinghouse, like DDT from Montrose Chemical Plant, PCBs from Westinghouse Plant, and other plants in the Los Angeles area, entered the LASDC Ocean and discharged to the Pacific Ocean via outfalls located Palos Verde Shelf. That's right up the road from Redondo Beach. Every symptom. They had declared this a fuse route place, and nobody knew. Nobody knew. This memorandum extensively documents the threat to human health and the environment posed by the DDT and PCB contamination on the Palos Verde shelf. By this memorandum, the EPA staff was authorized to gather information regarding whether response activities should be undertaken to address the contamination on the Palos Verde shelf and, if possible, to evaluate possible cleanup actions. That, that's 1997. And here we are, 2016, and our planet is dying. Mass animal deaths are now being recorded on a daily basis. We're expected to click and sig heil to every major government. If not, they're going to crack our heads. And boy, don't you believe it. They have machines that can invade our house, and we can't stop them. Edward Snowden is in hiding, for goodness sakes. It's such an outrage. We have millions and billions of people on this planet. You know what we need to do? Put our bodies in the street. We need to stop. We need to force them to stop. That's why I'm part of the Dem exit. And I am voting for Jill Stein. And I encourage every Republican to vote for some other independent. Vote for Ron Paul, for God's sakes. <laughs> I mean, really, write in Ron Paul. Because Hillary Clinton wouldn't be elected. I mean... This apple cart needs to be uh, turned upside down politically. The fiasco, the media, and you know why? Because we keep cling, cling, cling. And the young people who aren't paying attention are like, oh, my God, Hillary's so great. Oh, my God, Trump is our hero. My nephew told me Trump was a hero. <laughs> and my client's daughter's last night, my client is going to vote for Trump, by the way. Her daughters love Clinton. <laughs> She's like having a heart attack. I mean, we're we're both old enough to understand that it's all just Republicrats, folks. So it's 827, and I'm anticipating uh, Mimi German to be coming on the line here a little while, folks. So I'm hoping that we can talk to her because, uh, full disclosure, Mimi German and I, actually, we have, I've helped her form No Nukes Northwest formally. It's going to be a nonprofit. Uh, the whole mission is to close down the Columbia Generating Station. That's it, really. And to, and to stay active until the waste is properly managed and handled, which I guess is indefinite. <laughs> so it's going to be going on until it's forever. Uh, but we, this is a big issue. We are ignoring big catastrophes in our country. And just last night was a catastrophe. I felt like the Soviet Union's flag formally started to fly over the United States of America. It crowned the denouement of the 16 election cycle. This was it. This was like, hallelujah. Hillary Clinton got crowned last night, folks. And Trumpy, he might be on, He she might, you know, wouldn't that be ironic if she decided to make him, like, on her cabinet? <laughs> That would just be the kicker. We're giving them ideas. Old Bubba probably, if they're listening, he thinks that's funny. I'm I'm firmly convinced that uh, Trump and Pence both are going to get big bonuses from the Clinton Foundation when they help get Hillary elected. I am expecting nothing but fear porn from now until November. They, Trump and Pence are going to say the most scary things in the world to scare every Democrat who hates Hillary Clinton into voting for her. That's exactly what's going to happen. And I'm going to, this Democrat is not going to do it, you know. I guess I'm not a Democrat anymore. I guess I'm an official Green Party member. So there you go, man. I'm joining the rest of the world, the rest of the party, Embrace Green. I started that hashtag. It says Embrace Green. It's up to us, folks, and we get to be the ones who create our children's future. We have to be the ones who raise the scientists who are going to go to school, who decide that they're going to figure out what to do, how to reverse this nuclear pollution, the chemical pollution, how to remediate the earth. Guess what? They know how. Lots of it knows how. Mushrooms can really actually, mushrooms are like little uh, computers. They sort of go out into the earth and their little brains, they can't. They decide what needs to go back in there and they molecularly change the 
themselves to remediate the soil to be la tierra, the earth, the the place where we're intended to be, the real human beings. And this whole idea, Jules talks about this. This is why if, if you guys are not listening to Jules' show, you are seriously missing out. Make time because the stuff that she reports on is extremely valuable. It's all that nanotech, biotech, you know, the stuff that tells us that they're going to look right into our house, no matter what part of your house, and they can see you, and they're going to spray things in your body and biochemic. I mean, we're probably all biochemically changed. <laughs> they're waiting until I kick over. <laughs> Although I did have two kids, so and they're girls, so that means they get to reproduce. Uh, let's hope our children get to reproduce, eh? That's the saddest part about the nuclear pollution. That is the saddest part about what we have done to our planet as a collective whole. You know? Oh, yay, here is Mimi German. Hold on. Good morning. This is Lonnie Clark with UCY.TV, the Age of Fission radio show. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Lot. Hi, Lonnie. I recognize your number. I'm so happy you can join us. And good thing you saved our listeners. I've been ranting and raving about the uh, fascism and that is firmly that now has raised its flag over our country now. I thought the, uh, the Soviet Union red flag was flying high over the Democratic Convention last night. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Uh, well, um, I wouldn't call it crazy. I call it fascism. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm really refusing to allow people to use that acronym. They like us to say it's crazy. Oh, man, it's crazy. And that way when somebody gets so pissed off, they, like, freak out at someone. They're like, oh, he must have been crazy. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Right. It's not crazy. Right. Call it what it, it is. It's a police uh -huh. state. That's what I was saying. You think we're seeing it, we're going to see it's bad now? Wait till Clinton or Trump get in. The police state is going to be firmly in place. We are going to have to seriously be united in peace, man. Yeah, I don't think, um, you know, not to be a major downer, but it doesn't look to me like we're going to get united in peace, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look around at every protest I go to, and the riot police are there with, you know, their paramilitary gear yes, and their, you yeah. know, assault weapons against peaceful protesters. Yes. So, you know, and that's that's been going on since Occupy, and, you know, that's when they put it all in place was during Occupy. So the government took that opportunity against us during the time that we were having our, uh, you know, our, our uprising in the beginning, the really serious beginning of our uprising to oppress us, you know, and they, that's when they bought all this military gear and put it out on the streets and said, no, you, you don't get to say. You know, right? Sit down and, here and we are. shut up. Exactly, and here we are. It's yeah, sit down and shut up. We don't care mm -hmm. what you say. You know, that's interesting because I hadn't thought of it. But you're you're more than just an anti nuke activist. You're a life activist. Like you're a real peace activist. You're like, you know, you have you were part of the Occupy in Portland a lot. You're still part of Occupy in Portland, aren't you? Yeah, I was part of Occupy Portland. Um, I, you know, went and visited. I was uh, on the road at the time with my band, and um, not not throughout the whole thing, but through much of it. And we made stops at every single Occupy um, outpost on our journey into the United States, you know, and to say, hey, you know, I'm Occupy PDX, and you are, you know, Occupy wherever. And it was great to come together with all of these people who were really on the same page, which was the anti-fascism page. People get to say what we want, you know, and we get to not get killed by the cops, you know. The black community gets to not get killed by the cops. Um, we get to have a vote that actually means something, you know, and so on. And we get to have the banks not run our lives. You know, or destroy our lives, as the or case might be, students. you know. Or charge right, but, more money than we charge bankers. Yeah, and, and the government's response was, yeah, we do get to do all that, and you get nothing, you right. know. That's right. That's yeah, right. And, That's right. And, and this is just this is just another piece of that pie right now, you know, with the crushing of Bernie. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. it was, <coughs> did you see, did you read the Chris Hedges article? I I I heard well. I've read a lot of them recently. Um, I heard his uh, 
his discussion with Robert Reich yesterday. And what what I've been saying to people is also what Chris was saying, but Chris all, you know, he just has a, a way with words. Um, and what he said basically was to Robert Reich, who would, you know, so Robert says, you know, I agree that we need a third party. So let's put Hillary in and then work on the third party. And, and Chris was like, why would we do that? If you want a third party, you vote for the third party. That's what you do. You don't vote for the people you don't want in in order to get the thing that you don't want later, you know? <laughs> and it was great, and I encourage people to go to Democracy Now! and pull that um, whole segment up with well, Chris Hedges this, and Robert Wright. This was my thought about this, was that what it missed out on is a lot of Democrats, and I venture on the other side of the fence, the quote fence, because I think we only have Republicans, but a lot. I think a lot of the voting public have been voting for Democrats because they didn't. It was fear-based voting. They. This is the fear porn that's about to ensue in this country is going to be off the charts. So we I, had the of- same amount of fear porn when um, Gore was running and when Nader was running. You know, we had the same thing. Um, you know, Nader. I voted for Nader, and I got blamed for our loss, right. you know. Right. And I will be voting for either Bernie or Jill. I'm get, I think Jill, because it just makes more sense now um, for, for me. Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that's, that's cool. It, that's either way, it's a, I'm not voting for Hillary, you know. So for me, it's cool with whatever. I, I am going to vote for that third party now. Um, so I don't, I don't know where I was going with that, but, oh, yeah, fear porn. And they are going to tell us. They've been telling us, it's going to be your fault, it's going to be my fault when Trump wins. And my response to that at this point is, I didn't make Trump get to where he did, the media did. And the people who are uneducated, or the people who are just so, you know, whatever their trip is, you know, about Trump, you know, um, they want him. I had nothing to do with that. Hillary, I had nothing to do with her, her rise to, you know, her empire fame. I had nothing to do with that. You know, I, not one iota. I didn't give her a dollar to get there. Right. You know, I gave my dollars to Bernie to get somewhere. And they knocked him down and punched him out, you know. And I am not responsible for Hillary or Trump getting in. I'm responsible for me and the right thing to do for what I want for our planet, for the time that we have left on our planet. And a lot of you know, I don't think that we have a lot of time left on our planet. But while we're here, you know, if I feel like asserting myself to vote, I'm going to vote for what I want and who I want for the betterment of all for the time that we have left, you know. And I'm not scared about it. Me I'm just either. not. You know what I yeah. say to them? This is what I said to somebody on Facebook. They're like, they put up this post to remember Nader, and then, then they had a picture of Bush. And I said, you know why Bush did what he did? Because it was the Democrats who refused to stand up to him. That's right. It was right. the Democrats who refused to join the Congressional Black Caucus who stood yep. up and said, we want an investigation. Not one senator stood up with him. So we had nothing. Bush introduced the Unpatriot Act three days after after 9-11, not one of them stood up to it. Bush introduced the NDAA, not one, except Dennis Kucinich and Bernie Sanders. The only and Bernie, right. And mm-hmm. so, you know what? It is not the Nader voters who brought us the havoc and the hell and the yeah. police state. It is the cowardice in the Democratic Party. And just That's like right. last night, you know, I was t- telling our listeners, I watched Dabu 007 on YouTube, right? D-A-H D-A-B-H-O-O-O or something like that. You can put it in but he him and his partner were out there in the streets and they they covered the black lives matter protest like the the speech and the walk down to the convention where the super del the, the bernie delegates were going to join them it was so hilarious this is so typical democrats Th- they get down there and the crowd was gigantic probably much more than anybody expected it was a huge crowd the super delegates all exited we've seen the pictures of the empty convention what we didn't see and they captured it the super delegates looked out of the building. They all backed out of fear. They saw all these black people and went back in for a minute. They found different exits. Yeah, they joined the protest, but they were supposed to come out in mass and join and walk with them. And when the doors opened, they closed the doors and ran like cowardice. Like just exactly like the, the Democrats are the biggest effing cowards I've ever seen in my life. 
Mm-hmm. Now, this is why we have the Bush regime. This is why we have Gitmo. This is why Barack Obama clicked his heel, said Sig Heil, and stabbed us all in the back. That's how I feel mm-hmm. about Barack Obama. So, And this is why we have no nukes Northwest. This is why we have... This is why we have the Columbia Generating Station polluting the Northwest because Democrats up there refuse to stand up and say no. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. So, you know, I went to this thing last night. I was invited to go to speak at this panel. Uh, it's called the Nelson Mandela Fellowship or Fellowship Scholarship. And Obama, um, it was, it's a cool thing um, that Obama brought here or created here. And so youth from all over every single African nation can come to wherever in the United States. So let's just say a school like um, um, PSU last night, Portland State, uh, brought the fellowship, the African fellowship, to PSU for about three to four weeks. And so what these students, what these young people do is they converse with people here about what we do here, what they do there, all kinds of different things. So the panel last night was on the environment. So there were three members of um, the African Mandela Youth and then three members of our community representing environmental activism here. And one one of the young men said, so, you know, we, we hear all this stuff about what we're supposed to have in Africa, you know, in his, uh, his country, um, he wasn't from Zimbabwe. I can't remember where he was from, but he said we get all of the seconds. We get we get all of your used stuff. You know, you, you can just send it to us. Like we want all your used stuff, which has nowhere to go, and it's really super old and it's really bad. And he said, I don't even know if what the information is that we're receiving is used information. And so I addressed that, wow. and I said, I can guarantee you that. If you're being told anything about, in my world, about nukes as an energy source, for instance, it is complete PR because we receive the PR, you know, here. And if we're receiving the PR from our own um, corporations here about nukes, you're certainly receiving the PR there. And another person said right after that, well, you know, what does the United States do here to, you know, be anything environmental. And I said, let me explain to you what the United States is. And I said, I'm going to start from a very local level. Okay, you're here in Portland. So in Portland, the head of the public school system has known for whatever, three years, that we have had lead in our water, in our schools. And she never told a person. She never told anyone. So she allowed kids in Portland to drink lead water, in our schools, and never told. Well, she has now resigned. She didn't get fired. She resigned. Okay, let's take it up a level. Um, we have a factory here producing glass, and that factory puts out all of these terrible chemicals here that we didn't know about. But the governor knew about it. The EPA knew about it. <laughs> and and so the Environmental Protection Agency decided not to do anything about it. We're talking like, you know, mercury. And other, you know, terrible things that really damage the body, PCBs, especially for children. Yeah, all kinds of and stuff. no, it was way worse than PCBs. So, oh, really? so anyway, so the governor doesn't do anything about it when this news breaks, and she says, "Well, you know, we'll let the EPA handle it." <laughs> the EPA has known about this for years and did nothing. So, okay, so now we've gone from local level school to our governor not doing anything. Let's take it a little bit higher. Let's go to who controls the nukes. And I said, okay, so we have the NRC who is supposed to control, you know, nuclear issues that happen to nuclear power plants. But they won't do that. They'll just give the okay and a variance. Keep going. It's okay that you're leaking, you know, that fuel rods are leaking and have pinholes in them. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay that you didn't do your earthquake um, environmental study. You know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay that your bolts were put on upside down, backwards, and inverted and are stuck and, and are impeding on the flow of water to those fuel rods. Don't worry about it. And who's in charge of the NRC? The DOE, the Department of Energy. The Department of Energy doesn't care because they took a lot of money. And they get to get money, and they get to give the NRC money. So they just do that, and they don't do anything either. And who's in charge of the DOE? Well, let's take it to the president. What does the president do? The president says, let's sell nukes to India. You know, let's give them some more. 
And it doesn't matter that the nuke that we did sell them from, from GE is already completely leaking, you know, and has, like, only been online for, like, a very short time. And what else does our president do here? He hires the vice president of Monsanto to run, like, the agriculture business here, you know, the head of ag in, uh, at a national level. So I said to this guy from Africa, that is who the United States is. Wow. What did the kid I mean, his mouth you know, this is not a cool like, place. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's the so that is the definition of fascism, isn't it? Where the cor government works for the interests of the corporations. That's the definition of fascism. That's right. And the only way that the government is the government is if the corporations put those people into a powerful place to continue to give the corporations everything that they want. So the government's actually placed by the corporation. You know what's really ironic about this, Mimi? When I was a little girl, I'm old enough to be part of the Red Scare. I was petrified when I was a little girl of the Soviet Union and of black people. <laughs> I really was afraid of everything when I was a little kid. The world was a scary place. And I remember thinking, if I lived in the Soviet Union, I would, like, take to the streets. I would never s submit to that. And here we are. Wouldn't it be ironic if Russia actually had the ability to neutralize the industrial industrial military complex of the United States so that we could get our country back. I mean, the military right now is preparing for war. It is. And the, frankly, I believe there is a war on the American people. We have black people dying in the streets every day. At the, at, That's right. At the convention well, it's not just night. black people. It's, 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 not, it's, it's not just black people. It's hungry people. It's people who live in poverty as well. Whatever race creed or, you know, whatever little um, alley they live in, you know, or car they live in, you know, it's a war against the poor and it's a war against blacks and it's a war against Hispanics. Yeah. It's anybody who's not part of them. That's really it. If you don't comply with them, you're not part of them. That's the right. issue. And it's us right. against them. It's like, like the police. The police act like we're the enemy. We're not actually the enemy, and we're not that. We don't have to give them military respect. This is what I've seen. This is the difference. When we were when we were younger, we could flip a cop off and say "fuck you," and the guy would say, "Hey, you should talk to me with respect." And we'd like "fuck you." You don't deserve respect. He could not fucking punch us in the face, body slam us to the car, and tighten really hard plastic wraps around our wrists to the point where we feel like we're about to pass out. And have nothing said about it. Do you get what I'm saying? The militarization yeah. of the police. Now we have to give them. We're, we have to shake in our boots. They want us to shake in our boots when we see them. Yes, sir. No, sir. Here's my ID, sir. Okay, sir. And if you do not do that, and if you deviate from that at all, look. Sandra Bland got killed for telling this guy to fuck off. That's why she got killed. I mean, she was murdered. I think that I think that we as white people have a responsibility to continue to tell cops to fuck off because they're not going to kill us. So whenever I have an opportunity to tell a cop to fuck off, I generally do. You do? Not me. I'm scared of them. I, I make an effort never to go near them. Uh-uh. No way. Like, no. No, no, no. I, I do. Like, I'm not. I do not have that, like... Uh, I could, I mean, They're not going to, Lonnie, they don't kill white people. They get in trouble if they kill white people. You know what? I have seen an, uh, no, 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 no. Like, the, you know, it takes one to nut up and frankly. Unless you're mentally ill. If you, if you have any kind of mental, you know, disability, you know, then it doesn't matter what color skin you are, at least in Portland, mm. you know, because they have a, you know, they have such a record at killing people who, um, you know, they, they deem uh, incompetent to be human beings. Wow. Mimi, we have 10 minutes left. I'm sorry to deviate from what you came on to talk about. Uh, do you have any news that you'd like to share with us? Um, well, news from Hanford right now is that um, the powers that be at Hanford, <laughs> those who are in charge of making sure the workers are safe, are making sure that the workers stay unsafe by not giving proper uh, clothing and protective gear for the workers due to the chemical leaks that are still happening from the massive tank uh, gas outs. Why are, are they not, so, why are they refusing to do that? 
Um, it's a money thing. They they claim it's a money thing. These are so what would happen is so <laughs> they can then go and make another. I think they get to go and make another request for more money. You know, so it's a contractor. You know, so the contractor says, yeah, you know, you don't really need all that gear. And if you do that gear, then you're going to work slower for us. And then, you know, so on. So we're just going to go and do a change order for more money from the, the endless pit of money that comes in. And there's no reason. There's no sanity behind it. Um, you would think, why wouldn't people, why would people not be in full gear at Hanford? Right. Well, but yeah. you know why? Because they will tell you it's not necessary. I've actually read this on Facebook. Yeah, well, you people don't you're, understand. You're right. All it, you need to do is go wash. All these nuclear facilities <laughs> have the right kind of showers and the right kind of washers to wash anything off of your skin, and they're perfectly fine. You could be in Fukushima. You would get less radiation living in Fukushima for a week than you would flying in an airplane. Seriously. Yeah, you know, or eating bananas. Right. This mm-hmm. is, they really believe it, mm-hmm. too. That's the scary part. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're getting into ecocide. They're refusing. I actually said this earlier, Mimi. I'm going to have, I'm typing up this mass animal desk. I'm going to make an Excel spreadsheet so we can, like, instead of, you know, we're reading numbers. The numbers are exponentially growing, the mass animal desk. Uh, we're not even hearing about the 70, 100, 80 whales that die on a regular basis around the planet. The whales are dying. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. not small little little pods, one or two animals. Could you imagine waking up if you lived next to the coast and seeing 70 whales on your coastline? Yeah, it's it's the horrific. Grief? It's so horrific for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, would, I could not stop crying when I just read the article. I mean, I actually might, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe spiritually our hearts are growing so that we will be able to, like, you know, I guess I'm the eternal optimist. I believe we can save our planet once we face what we're doing. Well, I, um, I feel like there's small things that we can do for right now and Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, our anti-nuke platform. And I inadvertently discovered one last night, and it was a lot of fun. It was at this panel. So they had a woman on who was the head of uh, um, 350PDX. And so it's 350.org, but it's the the Portland chapter, right? And she's the head of it. And I said when I was talking about nukes, that, you know, we have to confront our own organizations that deal with the environment because even those organizations will feed you PR. And I said, let's take 350.org as an example. They will not come out directly and say, we are anti-nuke completely. They'll, what they'll do instead is say, yeah, we need, you know, nukes to rely on for the next 10 years while we pull off of fossil fuels. And I'm saying this at the panel. So the woman from 350PDX said, I have to say, that's not true. We are completely anti-nuclear. And I said, so is that your statement then? That you will not rely on nukes to come off of fossil fuels, that you are completely anti-nuke, because if that's the case, that's a first. And that's what we need you to say. That's what we need you to believe, you know, and that's what we need you to act on. So she said, yes, we're completely anti-nuke. And I said, well, great. There's your statement. Thank you. So I inadvertently cornered her into, I think, into making that statement. And we need all of the environmental groups to come out and say, we do not want nukes as anything for one more day as something to lean on while we pull off a of fossil fuel. Mimi, and we, we need, need that. more ma- than that. We need them to say. We need a lot more than that. No, but that's I a start, Bonnie, them. because they, they won't even say, you know, they won't even talk about it. So if they say nukes are, you know, absolutely not in the plan, that's what we need from 350 you know because they, they have so much money. You know why they have so much money? Do you know they will not disclose their list of donors? And do you know why? My 100% guess is because they are taking money from the nuclear industry. So we need well, them to what? say so, we're not so we, take, we need them to say well, we're not taking money from the nuclear industry. That's what the demand if they say we're not taking money from the nuclear industry, be curious to see how much their gross receipts go down by, even if they don't disclose. Well I think it's it's two separate things that intersect. And what I want from them personally is and what I want from no nukes to pull from these people 
are statements that are definitively opposed to nuclear power, 100% opposition. Because right now, in their platform, they rely on nukes as part of the plan to come off of fossil fuels for 10 more years. We only have one more day to depend on nukes. We never could depend on nukes. Nukes start breaking as soon as they're built. And they start breaking as soon as they're dug. You know, the first the first shovel, the first, you know, track hoe goes into the ground to dig up uranium because that's when the first native person who lives there is going to get killed and the first bird or deer or elk or antelope that comes by there is going to get killed, you know. So for her to say that last night, that was a step. And I don't know if she's going to get in trouble for that, you know, for make, being able to make that statement. And I'm going to follow through on that. And I'm going to tell her, I want to see that in writing. And now we have it on, we have it on audio, but it needs to become a part of their platform. Yeah, at least the 350 PDX. At least, even if the subchapter of 350 PDX, because I don't think, honestly, it would be really awesome if you could get them. Because you know what would happen if you could get these organizations to take that stance? The nuclear industry would stop giving them money. They wouldn't have to say, we won't take your money. They won't. That is, that, that is what would happen. They wouldn't be able to take your money, you know? They have to make a declaration, and they have to be brave, and they have to be courageous, and they have to recognize that this shouldn't be about being brave or courageous. This should be about being doing the right thing for the planet. Because if you're working for the planet, nukes have no role in your reality. Say that Period. again. Please say that again. If you are working for the planet, nukes have no role in your reality. You, you should not have to feel like you're being brave or courageous to say, no, we can't depend on nukes. That's... That is pure sanity. It's sanity to say we cannot depend on nukes. We, we, we cannot have them for one more day. That is the most sane thing that an environmentalist can say. So bravery and courage should not have to be in play in order for you to say that. And yet, that's what the environmental movement does to us when we say that. I have to, I have to like feel like, oh my God, I'm about to say something that I'm going to get, you know, totally beaten back for saying and that is what happened last night you know people were like that making faces not the people from african nations it was people from <laughs> from here you know and what were we they have saying? to what stand up pushback? what was their saying they said um the pushback was from a, a woman who was representing our city government hmm. you know and she wouldn't come out and say directly to me that you know, we need to rely on nukes. But as soon as I said that, she just shook her head and, like, and was trying to shame me, you know. And um, so I'm going to call her and talk to her about it and say, why were you shaking your head at me when I was saying that? What mm-hmm. about what I said doesn't work yeah. with your form of environmentalism? Because if you got nukes on your platform and you're an environmentalist, you're not an environmentalist. You're totally insane. Well, what we need to know is what they are is misinformed. They're not insane. They're grotesquely misinformed. They they are listening to people who spin it, who say the government has showers and we have really good methods of removing the radiation and don't worry, it won't harm you. They're listening to false information. So Mm -hmm. we have 45 seconds left, Mimi. I want to thank you for calling in. Uh, It's really a pleasure. I hope that you'll come back sooner than later since we only had a half an hour to really get into this. Oh, thanks, Bonnie, and I'm I'm sorry about that, but thanks for having me on again, and thanks to all of your listeners for just being really, really good people. Yeah, we actually do have a really great audience, and thank you, Joe, yep. for providing this venue and this radio station, because it is a jam on the airwaves. We have some one of the best shows that we can. So, uh, Mimi German with uh, No Nukes Northwest and Radcast.org. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, put your courage feet on, people. Uh, Take hope. Happiness is resistance. Don't let it get to you. Just take action. And we will win with positivity. Take care. Bye-bye.